surrounded by eight of the world's 10 highest peaks, including mighty Everest. The mountain city of Kathmandu emerged at a crossroad of ancient Asia. I thought I have to go. I'm there. Uh, I want to see the mountains. I want to see the people. Prayer flags adorn temples, which date back to the 17th century. Pilgrims make their way to local shrines, as merchants sell their fragrant wares in a local market. I love to show them my country, the mountains, villages, and also the cultural part. What discoveries await you, with a few extra days to venture through the temples and streets of colorful Kathmandu? Located at an altitude of 4,265 feet, Kathmandu was once known as Kantipur, or the City of Glory. As Mecca's Kaaba is for Muslim pilgrims, so is the Bodh Anad Stupa, the holiest temple in Nepal for Tibetan Buddhists. Rising above the dome is the four-sided Harmika, Buddha's eyes look out in all directions, symbolizing his total awareness. A lot of people, when they come to the temple, to the Buddhist temple, they just spin these prayer wheels, or we have seen the big prayer wheel, they come and they spin these prayer wheels. So these prayer wheels, mostly we see in Buddhist temples. Om Mani Padme Ho. Oh, many, but many <laughs> Kathmandu is the only city that we have seven world heritage sites within 20 square kilometers of radius. I didn't realize that Nepal had a large Tibetan population, so that was interesting to me to see. So in this painting, we have a three kind. One is mandala that you see right now. Mandalas like these are a ritual symbol of centeredness, a diagram mapping the universe or cosmos. Known as the oldest city in Kathmandu Valley, Patan is a center of both Hinduism and Buddhism, with 136 bahals, or courtyards, and 55 major temples. One of its unique attractions is the ancient royal palace, where Mala kings of Lalipur resided. Got to see the palaces and then all the temples, so many temples. I had never seen so many temples uh, in one place before. And all the pigeons, there were so many pigeons. A short rickshaw ride through the narrow streets of Kathmandu carries visitors to the Tamal Market, a vibrant hub where merchants sell rare spices and artisans craft woven fabrics and ceramic bowls. We took a wonderful rickshaw ride that was comfortable uh, going right through the streets. It's, uh, the plate is made out of sal leaf. The travelers, they discover so many things in Nepal, especially the different culture. And I always wanted to come to Kathmandu, and I'm so glad I did. Experience the diversity and the magic of a few extra days in Kathmandu. A mesmerizing spiritual hub nestled at the top of the world. I am from Kathmandu, which is the capital of Nepal. This is a city which is uh, a completely diverse city in terms of uh, many you know, tribal people living in the, in the city. That's why this city is also called as a melting pot. This is a city which, is, uh, which has plenty of art and architectures, dates back from 12th century until 18th century. People in Nepal, they are 
very warm welcoming. They believe that their karma will decide about their future life. We have a lot of cuisines, but the most popular in Nepal, which is called dal bhat, which means rice and lentil. And this is a very famous cuisine. It includes curry, Swiss chard, also some pickles, which you call it as sauce. It is the blend of all the spices, so that it is very, very special food from Nepal. So whoever come to Nepal, they never forget to test the Nepalese food. Nepal is a diverse country in terms of landscape. While visiting this country, you get to see the beautiful view of snow-clad mountain and the green mountains. Seeing the mountains with the landscapes and growing the food from there, where there is no accessibility of any of the transportation and all the things which are done by hand or even using the oxen to plow the field and that is something very panoramic. I hope to see you to discover Nepal and to experience the real Nepal. And I'm from Nepal, Kathmandu, Nepal and I come from uh, ethnic group called Newar, N-E-W-A-R, Newar. I was born and raised uh, in a middle class family uh, close to the old square of Kathmandu. I still remember when I was a little kid, I noticed the people living nearby my houses, they're all very poor, very poor. I, I still remember my mother had to uh, walk probably 20, 30 minutes to face the water from the spring or from water spout. There were no cars, there were very few dirt roads and we used to run after the car every time we see the car coming through the dirt road. That was Kathmandu probably 35 years ago. But now Kathmandu is very crowded, lots of cars, uh, very busy city. When I take my travels to the monuments, uh, all these old monuments, they're mostly built by as rulers called Malla, M-A-L-L-A, Malla Dynasty King, we call them. Since I belong to the same group, every time I take my travels to the monuments, I belong to those monuments. This is how I connect myself with the monuments or with the travels. Hiking in the Himalaya is definitely a big highlight, an Annapurna reason, a Mount Everest reason. Uh, hiking is very difficult. It's not difficult in the sense it's not high altitude hiking. We are not going really high altitude, but uh, lots of up hand down and step walking. But once you get to the lodge from the hike, all your tiredness disappear because you get a magnificent view in front. And on top of that, we meet lots of local people, all the villages. We pass through all these small villages and we stop there, we talk to the travelers and share their experience of living in that area with very limited resources. They have nothing, they have their field, they are working in a field, growing the, uh, all these uh, crops and they are eating all these crops. All they know is to wake up, go to the field, work, farm, you know, and raise these crops and eat. That's all, very simple life they are leading. I find them very innocent in their life. Very innocent, they are very honest. They don't think too much personal benefit. They always think for entire community. And that's a good thing we get to know when we go. I would like to have unforgettable experiences for my travelers so that uh, they have good memories, unforgettable memories they can share when they go back to their home.